Have you booked that trip to Ireland yet? Press the green button and visit the island of Ireland. See Ireland.com. Eurogold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Eurogold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial, and industrial build. La Vita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. The Warrington Irish Club friendly and welcoming club keeping the Irish culture alive. We have Irish and country music every Saturday night, tribute nights, race nights, charity nights and karaoke. All live sports are shown on big screens. We have snooker, dominoes and crown green bowling teams along with arts and craft. Pop in for a friendly welcome and book your event at the Warrington Irish Club. Give Frank a call on 01925 243 363. Mulligan's Funeral and Monumental Services are a family-owned funeral service first established by the late Brian Mulligan in 1996. We provide funeral homes in Gorton, Manchester and Reddish, Stockport and we pride ourselves on giving a friendly and professional service to all the families who use our service. Contact us on 0161 432 0809 Founded in Kilkenny, Ireland in 1702, but lost on a bet on a horse race in Deauville, France, 1918. Sullivan's was re-established a few years ago by direct descendants of two great Kilkenny brewing families, the Smithicks and the Sullivans. We're about to embark on our own journey across the United Kingdom. But this time, we won't bet the brewery. <laughs> Sullivan's. Brewing is in our blood. Press the green button and visit the island of Ireland. See Ireland.com. Hi everyone and welcome to the show. This week we're coming to you from the Southport Flower Show which was established in 1924. It's a great three day event with hundreds and hundreds of exhibits. So without further ado, let me take you on a little guided tour of what we saw today. Terry, can you tell me when was the Southport Flower Show first established? Well, the first flower show in Southport was established in 1924 and it was uh, made up of all the local gardeners and the businessmen of Southport decided to see and test the skills of their own gardeners and it's evolved since then and I've been involved for the last 40 years. This year it's been an, a bit of an uphill struggle to get the exhibitors to come because of Covid. However, what's here is brilliant. It's the highest number of medals we've ever, ever had 
in the gold medal, in the large gold medals. I'm so pleased for all the exhibitors, really am. Now, James, of course, you've had a wonderful time here at the Southport Flower Show. Tell me about your magnificent win. So, yeah, we've, we've done really, really well this year. It's the first year we've been here. So we've won the large gold medal and we've also won the Finch Trophy as well, which is absolutely incredible. I think from when this garden was first designed by John Gillow, to, to get to this point now is, is absolutely remarkable and he should have seen his face yesterday when he found out that he won it. He was a beaming smile and like a little kid at a sweet shop. Probably about six months ago the idea first came about. Since then it's been pretty much been built by John's design. John's brought a team around him, an amazing team of volunteers who've John sourced all the plants, got his team to come in and build it and it's been absolutely incredible that he's uh, got to this point now. How did you get the idea, or where did the idea come from, that uh, Southport Rugby Club should take part in this beautiful garden and put in all this work? It's a fantastic way to promote, so the rugby club's 150 years old this year. It's a fantastic event to come to, 60,000 people come through the gates every year to this event. So to have a, be able to promote our rugby club to 60,000 people is uh, an absolute no-brainer to have a, such a magnificent show garden. Southport Rugby Club is one of the oldest rugby clubs in the world, and we were formed in 1872. It's a massive part of the community in Southport. Um, we've got over 350 junior members, let alone 250 senior members there as well. So uh, I think the overall membership is about 1,000 people, but it's a big part of the community. Tell me a little bit about the age groups that you have. So we've got everybody who plays from 6 up to 65 years old, um, and women and girls. We're one of the big things, the big drivers at the moment is the women and girls game the new formation of the 12s, the 14s, 16s and 18s and our ladies team that were undefeated last season so uh, it is a big plus to us really. Now you've got a beautiful cup there, are you going to take it back to the rugby club and fill it to the top and then have, let you all have a good drink? Oh 100% and anything for John after all the work he's put into this so yes. I believe that you've got a, a tour or a visit to Ireland coming up next year? We have, we're visiting Ireland in May next year. We're the Ireland Lansdowne Club are also 150 years old, so uh, we're bringing 150 people over to Sunny Island. And tell me a little bit about Rotten Row. I believe it's very famous here in Southport. It's very famous. It's named after the Rotten Row in London. And it was originally started when people in the houses overlooking Rotten Row didn't like the view of the railway sidings. And they demanded that something was done about the area. So gradually the council agreed, this was many, many years ago, the council agreed that they would um, put a border, herbaceous border down there but that was kept in good condition for years and years and years and then it, about 2000, by then it had gone into disrepair and nothing was done about it. So in 2011, with the help of the local societies, the folk group, um, well, the societies in Birkdale, um, we've started a group called Friends of Rotten Row and since then we've um, had working sessions on a Monday and a Thursday and gradually brought the Rotten Row back to as good or even better than it used to be. Well absolutely, I've been uh, bumping into people today that was telling me so much about it. Good, yes I've been there since the start, since we restarted it. So I've been doing it for just over 11 years now and I enjoy every minute I'm down here. Oh, well done to you. Now, Angela, of course, we've had a lovely day here at the flower show, but we all struggle to look at grow flowers or maintain them or whatever. Is there any tips you could give us? Well, I'm actually quite a beginner in terms of gardening knowledge myself. I yeah. love the work and we're constantly being praised, which encourages no end. But I suppose good weeding, good watering, um, not some knowledge of plants is always helpful, but I'm learning so much. If I have any queries, there's plenty of people with um, huge amounts of knowledge that can advise me. Yeah. But I'm afraid I'm not an expert myself. But I'm sure this sun isn't uh, helping the flowers this year, is it, Anne? No, it's, the sun has been very, very strong. And unfortunately, on Rotten Row, we haven't got any source of water. So the only thing we can do is um, we've got a golf cart, cart that um, we carry watering cans and that's taken down full half mile of 
herbaceous border and we have to carry the water in watering cans so it's not very successful. Do you enjoy it Angela? Oh I love it really, it's, it's, yeah, it's very therapeutic, um, great crowd of people, lovely tea and cakes at the end of each session <laughs> and yeah just really we all yeah, just really nice. enjoy it and as I say people walking along <coughs> from the caravan site or just strolling they always admire it so it makes you work harder. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about your Irish connection. Well, I do help with the with the gardening, and uh, they do let you in. Yeah, they? they let me in. I I do turn up, but they're lovely company, and uh, they're teaching me things because I'm not very green fingered, but I always get advice as to you know what needs to come up, and I've learnt quite a bit really with being with them all. But anyway, I have a dad. My dad, well, my dad was from Galway. He lived on uh, St Nicholas Street, but I won't say what number. I have a lot of cousins over there that I've not met because I've not been over, but I'm hoping to go over eventually with my sister. Now, she's Deirdre, so she did get an Irish name. I got a French name. So I'm hoping to get over there in the next year or so. Oh, I'm sure you'd enjoy it, and it would be lovely for you to meet all your family over there and your cousins. Do a little bit of Irish dancing, which we did for about 10 years, so... Uh, Catch up on a few Kayleys when they go over there. <laughs> did you, where did you dance here in, in Southport? Uh, London. London, um, as I was growing up, my dad, uh, Dulwich. Dad wanted us, me and my sister to be Irish dancers, which we did a lot of competitions everywhere. So, But that was when I was about 14. That I haven't done it since. So, <laughs> But yeah, I love the Irish music and I just love the Irish anyway, you know. So. It's on a 38 acre site and it's all full with different things, you know. It is a two day event. Uh, I, I came here 41 years ago, I'd never grown a plant in my life and I fell in love with the show. Two, two years, well a year later I put a, a pot plant in the amateur competitors and it's just grown from there. In 1994 I put my first stand on in the Grand Floral Marquee. Wow. So. If you come to Southport Flower Show, you see something you like, you never know, you might end up showing in the Grand Floral Marquee. The paramount thing is, is, is flowers and flower show. But there's lots of families that come with children, and we've got to entertain them as well, because they're the gardeners of the future. If you remember, think about it, plant today for the future. And that's, you know, that's what Southport's all about helping younger people to establish the gardens and even if they aren't help in planning a garden there's somebody here to help you. My favourite thing was the lovely cakes in this cafe and the tea and the beautiful flowers. Yeah. And I've really enjoyed the floral marquee mm -hmm. and um, obviously here with the vintage cakes and the dog show as well. That was really different. Tina, tell me a little bit about your beautiful stall here and all those lovely cakes. Well, we have a really nice range of cakes, actually, and we do a few gluten-free for those that need it. We do a lovely raspberry ripple red velvet over there. Uh, a fabulous uh, chocolate orange, my favourite, because I love the orange curd that runs through it. Um, lemon drizzle, that's always a seller. Everybody loves lemon drizzle. And this is a new one. This is um, a Victoria sandwich, which is a rainbow cake, but it's also got fruit flavours running through it and the dried fruits on the top. Really nice. And of course, you can't beat the traditional scone, clotted cream and jam. Well, suddenly I've got very hungry. <laughs> so have I talking about them, to be honest. <laughs> You've got a ration book. What's the idea of that? Well, we're a 1940s tea room. Uh, we usually paint 1940s music, everybody loves it, loves the theme and the ration book is part of that theme. Um, so, and we have, of course, we have the Union Jack flags. Uh, it's all to do with the 1940s. Oh my goodness, yeah. have you had a busy day today? We've had a, a good day today, thank you. Yes, not bad at all. It's kept us on our toes, quite busy. 
Well, we're having a wonderful time here at Southport Flower Show, but we've got to take a little break. So while you're away, I'm going to have a nice cup of tea and some lovely cakes. Have you booked that trip to Ireland yet? Press the green button and visit the island of Ireland. See Ireland.com. Eurogold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Eurogold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial, and industrial build. La Vita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes, using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. The Warrington Irish Club friendly and welcoming club keeping the Irish culture alive. We have Irish and country music every Saturday night, tribute nights, race nights, charity nights and karaoke. All live sports are shown on big screens. We have snooker, dominoes and crown green bowling teams along with arts and craft. Pop in for a friendly welcome and book your event at the Warrington Irish Club. Give Frank a call on 01925 243 363. Mulligan's Funeral and Monumental Services are a family-owned funeral service first established by the late Brian Mulligan in 1996. We provide funeral homes in Gorton, Manchester and Reddish, Stockport and we pride ourselves on giving a friendly and professional service to all the families who use our service. Contact us on 0161 432 0809 Founded in Kilkenny, Ireland in 1702, but lost on a bet on a horse race in Deauville, France, 1918. Sullivan's was re-established a few years ago by direct descendants of two great Kilkenny brewing families, the Smithicks and the Sullivans. We're about to embark on our own journey across the United Kingdom. But this time, we won't bet the brewery. <laughs> Sullivan's. Brewing is in our blood. Press the green button and visit the island of Ireland. See Ireland.com. Welcome back. We're having a lovely day here at Southport Flower Show and I've been joined now by Dan from Mercer Falconry. Now Dan, tell me a little bit about the birds that you've had on display today. So we've flown a few birds. This morning I flew my three and a half month old step eagle, Hara. Uh, they, we then flew a cast of Harris hawks, so two Harris hawks together. And then we've just flown Swear here, the Eurasian yeah. eagle owl. So tell me, where does these birds come from? So there's quite a wide spread. Um, Hara, the yeah. step eagle, comes from sort of Russia and Nepal. You get them flying around Mount Everest. The Harris hawks are a Southern American species, so Argentina, uh, Mexico, yeah. Chile. And Swear here is a Eurasian eagle owl, so most of Europe and Asia. So how do you manage to train them? Well, it's different for every single bird and it depends on their flying style. With Sway, I've had him from just a tiny little baby, just five days old. So his training started really early on. As soon as he could walk to me, um, I would get him walking to me for food. Never give him food, never go to him for food. He always has to come to me for his food. Then that turns into running, then he starts jumping and eventually starts flapping his wings until he's flying to me. Now the crowd loved him today and he I think he loved the crowd as well. He's very popular in our displays. Everybody loves a great big owl. All owls share a common trait and that is completely silent flight. So he's got very soft feathers and that cushions him in the air. He's then got a, a tiny little line of spiky feathers that point forwards along the front of his wing. It's like a little comb and that helps to cut through, uh, through the air rather than the air hitting the wing and making a noise. 
and then he's got all these little ruffles can you see on the back um, they help to scatter the air so when a bird is flying the noise that you can usually hear is called wingtip vortices. It's as the air spills out of the uh, sides of the wings and starts to swirl. And these just help to scatter that air and it makes them completely <coughs> silent. Over here, good boy. We've been here since Wednesday and we're leaving on Sunday. Two displays a day, each day. And with birds, you just never know. Any tiny little change or difference can really just set them off. This is actually our first year of trading. Um, I've done this as my only ever career since leaving school. Um, and so this year is my turn to do it as myself. Uh, and we've had, yeah, for the first year, quite a lot of displays and we've still got more to come. So we do have a, a website, mercerfalconry.com, but then we have all the social media, uh, Facebook, Instagram. We also have a, a YouTube channel where we make videos about all the birds at home. Uh, so there's videos about Sway growing up. Uh, soon there will be a video all about Hara, the three and a half month old eagle growing up. So people can find us everywhere at Mercer Falconry. Hey Billy, what have you enjoyed today about the flower show? Well, uh, I enjoyed everything. Lovely. A lovely day out. Just plenty to see. Plenty, I'm not saying plenty to spend like, but... <laughs> <laughs> but just things you think you could buy, but you think, can I fit it in my car? <laughs> well, it's a fabulous day, isn't it? There's so much to see. Well, there is so much to see, and the people. I just can't believe how many people are here. You know. Yeah. Now tell me about uh, your Max and Paddy, isn't it? Well, Max and Paddy, it is. Yeah, two belting Jack Russells, and they love it themselves. It's a pity they can't talk, really. <laughs> yeah, and they're very mannerly. They are very mannerly. Yeah, yeah they're Ma Martin. Yeah. How old are they, Billy? They're three years old. And it's been a beautiful day here, hasn't it? It has. It sure has, yeah. And yeah. I hope the weather keeps up for all the people at weekend. Well, absolutely. Now, uh, is this your first year here? No, it's the second year here, and. The first time we came, it was um, three years ago. Three years ago, and then it was the box it stopped everybody coming in there. Oh, the nasty COVID. The next nasty COVID, yeah. yeah. So would you recommend it to people to come along? Well, I sure would. We'll come again, you know, and uh, I think it's worth every penny. Oh, I've had a great day today, spending time with my dogs. And the weather's been good. And Billy will love it because I've not spent any money yet. <laughs> uh, well, that makes a change. It does, it does. And you've been through such a difficult time over the last 12 months, haven't you, Denise? Yeah, I have, I have. Been poorly. We're coming round, we're getting through it, we're getting through it. Yeah. The best thing about my day today is meeting you, Martin. I haven't seen you for a long time. It's lovely to see you too, Denise, and honestly, it's been the highlight of my day as well, meeting you and Billy. That's nice, that's nice. All the exhibits here are all specialist nurseries. I've tried to bring them in from... Uh, there's some from County Durham, there's some, uh, two or three from Wales, South Wales. Anybody if it was interested in begonias or anybody with cact who want to be cactus growers, they can come along and speak to the specialist nurseries. Even if you've never grown a plant before in your life, there'll be something here for you to start growing with. got some beautiful flowers, lovely exhibits. What happens to them all when the show finishes on Sunday night? Well, the majority of them, like the specialist plants, they'll be put in, uh, tied up and put in the van for another show. But uh, things like the fuchsias, begonias, streptocarpus, uh, one or two other cut flowers, they'll be all sold off at knockdown prices at the end of the show on Sunday. Oh, 
all together, I will be very happy if we reach 60,000 like we did in uh, 2019. Well, the weather is certainly helping you, Terry. That's one. It's a lovely day here. Yes, it is. Normally, we get a bit of rain at Southport, but I've told everybody upstairs in God's room, do not let it rain. So nice to be here with all of you in Southport. Woo! Are we ready to dance a little bit? Yes, I can see you want to dance. Come up and dance with us if you want to, or sing a little song. Disgrace, tell me a little bit about your experience today. Oh, it's been so much fun. We've had partying with people, giving away prizes. It's been such a ball of a day and everyone's been so nice. So what are you doing tonight? What are you up to now? So we've just been giving away prizes, DJing, doing some spin the wheel games, some karaoke with people as we're from Funny Boys, the drag cabaret company in the UK. So yeah, having fun basically. So sad that you leave it. Takes time to believe it. Antonio, I'll, I'll tell you what, you're really looking fantastic today. <laughs> Thank you so much. So do you, so do you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, but it must have taken you a lot longer than me. Uh, about two, two, three hours to get ready, but it's worth it. It's Southport. It's, it's a lovely, beautiful day here. Is this your first time here? Uh, yes, I, well, I was here four years ago once, but this is like the first time <laughs> really experiencing Southport. So I'm very happy with the weather and everything. Do you believe in life after love? I can feel something inside me says I really don't think you're strong enough, no. Now you've been banging out the music, Dale. How long are you on stage for? Uh, only till six now, and then I don't know what we're going to do. I think we might go and party. Yeah. We might go and party. Yeah. Four has yeah. to offer. Can we come? Yes, of course you can come. Come party with the funny boys. Yes. Well, it's been a lovely day here at Southport Flower Show and we've really enjoyed it. And of course, we've met some old friends as well. Now, we hope you've enjoyed the show at home. That's about it for this week. Henry McGlade is back with us next Thursday evening with his show from County Mayo. And we are here, as usual, at 7.30. Until then, thank you all so much for watching and we really hope you enjoyed all the flowers. Yeah.